Before today's testimony, the judge established what prior bad acts could be used to cross-examine the former president if, and I have to emphasize the if, he chooses to take the stand. His attorneys so far have not said whether Trump will testify, despite this comment that he made just on Friday. President Trump, are you going to testify? Yes. And joining me now is CNN contributor John Dean, who served as White House counsel to Richard Nixon and also co-wrote the book Authoritarian Nightmare, Trump and His Followers. So, John, you know, I'm, I'm just curious here to set the stage on this. Trump has a big decision to make about whether he should will testify or not. As an attorney, as uh, someone who would have been in the position of, of watching uh, the, maybe the first president have a criminal trial, except for things turned out differently in the case of Nixon, do you think Trump should testify? It's rare that any defense attorney wants his client to testify. Uh, in this instance, it's possible, but uh, to me, doubtful, particularly since the rulings on the Sandoval uh, hearing sh are really uh, very negative for Trump. Lots of the bad acts, lots of his prior behavior, such as the E. Jean Carroll defamation, the Tisha James's lawsuit against him for fraud, those can all come into play, and he has to address them. Uh, and uh, that could be very uncomfortable for him. That's right. And the Sandoval hearing, of course, established what they were allowed to ask if he does take the stand. As you point out, all those prior cases are, are now fair and square on the table. One thing, John, though, that is not on the table, the judge said that the Access Hollywood tape, the infamous grab him by the P tape, could not be shown to jurors. Now, I guess on the one hand, I don't think there's anyone in this country who doesn't know about that tape and hasn't heard that tape. Nonetheless, it is years ago at this point. Many people on this jury may not have thought about it for a long time, may not be thinking of it in the context of this. So the fact that they're not allowed to play it may matter. How do you see it and what do you make of the judge saying no to that tape? Well, I can understand why the judge didn't want to have the actual recording played to the jury because it could be deemed too prejudicial. Uh, but still, they're going to get the content. They're going to get a transcript of what was said on that bus uh, pulling into the Access Hollywood show. So, and that is the, a chance to actually hear it uh, word by word in a way that is even clearer and more disgusting than to listen to it. So I'm not sure that uh, there's any real difference. In fact, it might be a benefit to understanding why this issue was so sensitive and so central to the case and understanding it when you actually just have the transcript. Yeah. Well, it is amazing, as you point out, sometimes, you know, you see it in black and white. Right, you see the words as opposed to hearing yes. them, and we all do process things differently. So that's significant. Um, so here we are tonight, uh, t today. You're going to have a hearing tomorrow morning as part of the case uh, about the gag order. Now, prosecutors say that Trump has violated it at least times and in, uh, ten times. I'm sorry. And John, as you know, in this gag order, he uh, was prohibited from saying prejudicial or nasty things really of any sort against potential witnesses or jurors or you know family members of the judge although not the judge himself so 10 times they say it was violated and today Trump said this about somebody who is obviously anticipated to be a central witness his former fixer Michael Cohen let me play it Cohen uh, is a lawyer represented a lot of people over the years now, I'm not the only one and wasn't very good in a lot of ways in terms of his representation. And also the things he got in trouble for were things that had nothing to do with me. He got in trouble, he went to jail. This had nothing to do with me. This had to do with the taxi cab company that he owned, which is just something he owned, and medallions and borrowing money and a lot of things, but it had nothing to do with me. And what are they going to look at all the lies that Cohen uh, did in the last trial? He got caught lying in the last trial. So he got caught lying, pure lying. And John, of course, Trump's team will say that Cohen was convicted uh, for that and, and served prison time. So they'll say, oh, Trump was just stating a fact. But nonetheless, he is the one stating it. Is that a violation of the gag order or not? It could technically be a violation of the order because the order seeks to have him not talking about these things to influence the jury or uh, while the jury is not sequestered, they're not supposed to read and listen to television. He's certainly putting it out there in the atmosphere where they could easily uh, 
get access to this information and hear his characterization of the witnesses. Mm -hmm. And that's what the, the order tries to avoid. So Trump just seems unable to control himself. If it's in his mind, it often comes out of his mouth. And he's thinking terrible thoughts about Michael Cohn uh, after hearing the opening statement. Uh, and he knows what uh, is at issue, so he just can't control himself. And so we'll see what the judge does with this tomorrow. I, I, it's a very tough ruling and an interesting one. Yeah, that's going to be crucial. And obviously, there could be fines. Eventually, you could end up with prison. But it, it does look like this would be a situation of fines. And they're de minimis. It's more the statement that would be made uh, in, a via, in, in calling that out. All right, John Dean, thank you so much.